In 366 CE, the Council of Laodicea from Canon 29 prohibited the keeping of the Sabbath. So now we have the first time where the Sabbath is actually being outlawed under penalty, which continues the introduction of these accepted pagan festivals, such as Sunday worship, to the December Sun festivals, and the Easter system, which now replaces the Passover. What was also altered at this time in 366 was the way the understanding of the biblical system and the law was to be interpreted. The law given to Moses was now held to be no longer relevant, and the New Testament passages were being reinterpreted to justify the existing pagan practices. In 381 CE, the Council of Constantinople seized the formulation of the doctrine of the Trinity. It defines the Holy Spirit as a third part of the Godhead furthering the binatarian heresy that came out of the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE, as we have discussed previously. Now, there were no Trinitarian emperors on the throne until this date of 381, where we see the Trinity being formulated at Constantinople under the protection of Theodosius. All of the emperors until this date of 381 were Unitarian, except for one, Julian the Apostate, who was a pagan. Now, the creed of Unitarianism is based on the theology as expressed in Psalm 45, verse 6 and 7, and also in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. The early apologists, such as Irenaeus at Lyon, held the theology of Unitarianism in the second century, as we've talked about earlier. The Goths, the Germans, the Lombards, the Alans, the Suvi, the Vandals, Hiroli, and the Britons, and all the northern tribes, also held the theology of Unitarianism. It came from the teachings of the theologians and the disciples of the apostles centuries before the Council of Nicaea in 325, where this binatarian heresy was first formulated. And now in 381, at the Council of Constantinople, the Trinity is being formulated under the theology of the Cappadocians, Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory of Nazianzus, and Basil, over 350 years after the death and resurrection of Christ. Seventy years later, in 451 CE, we have the Council of Chalcedon. The full doctrinal position holding the Holy Spirit to be an equal person of the Godhead was not agreed upon until the Council of Chalcedon in 451 CE. Now also at this council, the role and the function of the sons of God as messengers or ministering spirits had been reduced to the point where their existence had become trivialized and this word or term angel ceased to be a descriptive function of a son of God executing the plan of God. And from Chalcedon in 451, an angel had become an entity in its own right which achieved an inferior existence to the perceived role of the Messiah and the elect. This then elevated the Christology and removed Christ from the creation at all levels in accordance with this Trinitarian dogma. But this was not the view of the early church, and an angel was simply seen as a messenger of the sons of God and as a spokesman for God. Now, with the inauguration of the Holy Roman Empire, we see that the Sabbath was ruthlessly persecuted wherever it could be. And most religions today are the result of the collapse of truth in the persecutions of the Sabbath-keeping churches. And most Sunday-worshipping churches then threw away the Passover, and then they threw away the nature of God. Now they're tied into the whole system, and it's not just Sunday worship. It is also Christmas, and it's also Easter, and it's also the Triune God. Modern Christianity, by and large, has nothing in common with original Christianity. The rise of Islam and the later wars with Islam are arguably the direct result of the false Christian system that came out of Europe and West Asia with the theology that came from the Greeks. This is based on the Cappadocian theology system, based on a triune God, 
that attempted mystical union with God and as God. Sun worship and the triune God system simply does not work. The end result of 1700 years of these false doctrines have seen the near destruction of the planet and the persecution of the people genuinely trying to obey biblical laws. If you'd like to gain a better understanding about this subject and others like it, please visit Christian Churches of God on the web at ccg.org. Thank you for listening.